Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to this first session of the day. Uh, we had uh, three presentations here, but uh, first of all, I would like to thank Professor Lenitz and the organizing committee for a very excellent dinner yesterday, and uh, I think I can speak for everyone if we really enjoyed it. So, thank you very much. The first speaker of today is uh, Professor Reza. Yasna Yasar, and uh, the title of this presentation is Auto Driver Algorithm for Autonomous Vehicles for Ground and Aerial Vehicles. And Professor Yasar is uh, the principal head of mechanical and automotive engineering at RMIT in Melbourne. And Professor Yasar is a professor now, and he started receiving his uh, master degree from Tehran Technical in 1990. And in 1997, he acquired his PhD from the Sharif Institute of Technology in Nonlinear Dynamics and Applied Mathematics. And Professor Yasar is a specialist in classical and nonlinear dynamic systems. And uh, Professor Yasar has authored 10 books and more than 200 uh, technical papers. So, yes, please.
At any moment, you are turning about this point, which is curvature center. While you are moving in this ellipse, the curvature center moves on that diagonal. I'm going to show you later the equations. So you got the idea. Now let's take a look how we can control kinematically the rotation center of a car. If you have a front wheel steering car like this, the rotation center, kinematic, the rotation center of your car would be on rear axis, like this. Its intersection point of perpendicular to every wheel. And what happens is this. You can control the position of curvature center, one dimension, just on rear axis, by changing the steer angle. But if you are lucky to have four wheel steering like this, then you have two degree of freedom. At any point, you can turn about whatever you want as curvature center. Let me clarify what is the difficulty with the front wheel steering. This is your car front wheel steering, and this is curvature center or rear axis. You can turn about that. But if this point is like here, you can't do that. You have to turn for a transition to adjust your car. This is what we, the drivers, do. To adjust your car, to put this point on rear axis. But if you have four wheel steering, like what you see here, you can turn about any point at any time by adjusting front and rear steering. We don't have such a system. The four wheel steering mechanism or cars that appeared around 10 to 40 years ago, they didn't do that. Front and rear were dependent, not independent. Here we need independent to adjust that. So we don't have this, we never had this such a car, but it uh, gives you that using four wheel steering gives us a big advantage. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about front wheel steering, not rear, four wheel steering. Let's assume that you're turning on that ellipse. Some mathematics gives you the steering angle of inner front, outer front, inner rear, outer rear. When you use them, then you can mathematically Turn on this. The red dot shows curvature center, the point that car is turning about. And the yellow dot is your car. For simplicity, I eliminated the orientation, but believe me, the orientation is correct. So when you are moving in that ellipse, you are actually turning about the red dot at any instant. It looks very simple. If you have the curvature center, you adjust kinematically the steering angle to put the kinematic turning center on top of the curvature center and if you follow that pattern you are going to follow the road you don't need to steer. Steer will be done by a computer. This is an example. Very slowly you are turning at this circle. Very slowly means the speed is around 1 meter per second. It's close to zero for us. It can work. It works kinematically. Those black lines are perpendicular to front and rear steering wheels. In this case, I'm using four wheel steering. It works very well and follows the pattern. But look what happens if the speed is higher. This is what happens. In reality, kinematic steering is not helping us to follow the path. What happens is that because of size and dynamic of the system, you are not following the path that you are expecting. In this case, this car is unrested. When you are unrested, you have to steer more at, high, at higher speed to follow the same path. Right? If you are unrested, the opposite. I don't go in that direction, but you got the point. Now, the picture is clear. You are talking about three points. Three points. First, kinematic center of rotation, which is perpendicular to the front and rear steering wheel. Then, there is curvature center of the road, and there is a third one, which is dynamic center of rotation, actual center of rotation. The point that the car is turning about. My goal is to put this, the dynamic center, on curvature center, no matter where it is. How we can do that? By controlling this one. So you have to find the correct steer angle to put dynamic center on curvature center, and this is what I'm going to, to do. I give you the algorithm, how we do it. Now we have to go to dynamics to see what is new that deviates from kinematic 
and we have to control them. If you have a car like this, whatever happens, whatever you do to control your car happens under the uh, wheels. We generate forces and moments under four wheels and that's it. No matter what is your car, Audi or Holden for example, you must generate correct forces to follow the path. But what we do is that we collect all, all of those forces, we bring it to the mass center of the car, and we develop the equations of motion. But we go for another step to make it more simple. More simple we, uh, means we assume that the car is two-dimensional. Two-dimensional means three degree of freedom. X, Y, and Y. So we eliminate pitch, roll, and bounce. So in this case, we have three degrees of freedom. It is good, 95% exact, according to the experiment, but we go another step to make it a little bit more simple, and that's bicycle model. Again, another few percent we lose by exactness, but we get a lot of simpler equations. So that's our model, bicycle model. Before going forward, I have to mention what is the input-output of this system. First of all, delta is a steering angle. It's in my hand as a driver. So I control the steering angle. This is what I'm going to determine later on by computer. So delta is the input. And we have velocity. That velocity has two components. First, forward velocity dx, it's under my control. I control forward velocity. With the steering angle, what happens? The car will tear and some portal, some portion of velocity goes laterally. It's out. That lateral velocity can be shown by beta. Beta, side speed angle of the whole car, not tire. The whole car is out. Another output is R, which is yaw rate. The angular velocity about z axis. Okay? Two parameters, take a look, A1, A2, determines the position of the mass center of the car. By playing with A1, A2, you can control the the overall behavior of the car from under steer, over steer, neutral steer, and so on. But these are given. For, for your car, A1, A2 are fixed. Also, the other thing which is fixed is side speed coefficient for front and rear tires. i show you later. Okay, these are the equations. Three equations for our system. As you can see, there are some parameters. Those parameters are here. Just take a look on these parameters for a moment. What you see here is A1, A2, A1, A2, A1, A2, which are fixed for your car. Then you see C alpha for front and rear, which is fixed for a specific tire, a specific pavement. So when you are driving your car and the condition is not changing, all of these parameters are constant except Vx. Vx is under my control. If you fix Vx, then all of these parameters are constant, put them back, we can solve the problem for input. Where is the input? Delta is the input. So you control the car by delta of t using these equations. So far, this is what we have. This is the system. Given parameter for a specific car. Input are delta and forward traction, and output are Vy, lateral speed, Vx forward speed or yaw rate. I mentioned that Vx is under my control, but actually, the, uh, mathematically, input is f of x. Vx is output. But what we do practically is doing this. We put Vx back here as input, so we keep it constant. Input would be just delta, so Vx given delta input, and these are output. We can measure f of x out of our question. We are working with these kinematic variables. Our system, very simple. One input, three outputs. And then using or reading the output, some kinematic transformation, we can measure the actual path that the car is moving. x, y, z, all of them parameter of s, which is road path or time or what. Okay, that's the system, as you can see. But this is not what we are going to work with. What we need is opposite to that. We need a system to give the path actually and determine what delta can give me that path. 
And that delta must go through the filter of dynamic analysis. So what we need is this. I need x, y, z given. Kinematic analysis gives me what kinematic dynamic value that is needed. Those must go to the dynamic system, determine delta. And delta goes to the same system, gives me the actual path. Then I can compare these to desire and actual. But look at this, it's a strange. We don't have such a system. There's a block that there is a block that we can't or we don't have anything here to give me delta. What we did was substituting the actual dynamic system in the steady state variables. At the moment, accept me that this block is working properly. So the steady state maker dynamics is here, hat given, variable calculated, goes here, calculates approximate delta. And delta goes to actual system, gives me the actual path, then I compare these two. Okay? So what we have is here. That's steady state condition. These are actual equations. These are the steady state conditions. And it goes with this assumption that vehicles are always at steady state conditions or so close to them. This is our assumption. It took us one year to prove that it is working or find a condition that these are working. And look what happens after applying the whole story. Two cars going on a circle at different speed. Look at the intersection of perpendicular uh, lines to the front and rear axle. That point, the, the intersection of the black line, shows kinematic center of rotation. Center of the road is actual center of rotation. And as you can see, the dynamic center of rotation is exactly the curvature center, which is at this point, at this example, it is just the point at the center of the curve. Another view, maybe it is fun to look at. And whenever I show this movie, people are waiting for an impact or accident. There is no accident. They are transparent to each other. So don't... <laughs> Expect any accident. I'm waiting for one to pass the other one, but there it is. Okay. Now let me give you an example. We applied that algorithm to hundred different scenarios, and all of them were successful. Let me give you a hard example as a, the only example today. Lane change example. Lane change is not following a long path, which is so simple. It's short distance, very little displacement. So it, was, it is so hard for any, any control system, any algorithm. If you are a New Yorker driver, you change lane like this. I was working, I was living in New York for 10 minutes. But if you are a wise person, you do this. A cyclone uh, lane change. It gives you no jerk at the boundary condition, reasonable lateral acceleration, and so on. This is the equation. Anyway, this is the path that my car is supposed to go. Around 28 meter, changing 3 meter. 3 meter is normal lane change displacement. One more time, look at the path. This is the path. You are following this path. Forward X, lateral Y, and look what happens. When you are here, curvature center is here at infinity because it was a straight. So, by moving on this red path, curvature center comes from infinity forward, stops at 40 meters, then moves to infinity, jumps back here, comes close around 40 meters again, goes back to infinity. Very hard path of curvature center. We did that, and the result is this. Here you can see the red, the desired path, and also the black, the actual path that your car is turning or moving on. Let me give you a better picture. There is some error. Displacement in Y, displacement in X. For this example, around 10 centimeter error in Y and around 20 centimeter error in X. Reasonable for 30 meters and 3 meters. 
but we have to implement some control system. At the moment, so far, what we did was this. You start with a desired path. That desired path goes to telemetry, like this. And it goes from global to local coordinate. Then using calculus, you find position of curvature center in local coordinate. Using city state, dynamic equation, you can play delta. That delta needs some correction I give you later, but at the moment that delta goes to actual dynamic system, which is here, calculate kinematic variable, and then another kinematic transformation goes <coughs> to global velocity, then you need integration and find the actual path. So desired path, actual path. This is what I did. The previous example showed that. We x desire is something that is under my mind. But we have to take care of error within this. The first error would be y. y was lateral displacement. Find the display, difference. The difference goes to a gain box. It gives you error for delta. That error for delta goes and corrects this to give you the correct delta to eliminate y. For x, you find a difference. The difference goes to another box to give you a correction for velocity. That velocity goes and corrects the desired velocity to give you the best velocity to eliminate the lateral error and forward error. I'm done. The conclusion is that auto driver algorithm can work and eliminate steering by driver. Let's take a look on references. The first reference, the fundamental vehicle dynamics is my book, 2009. Second and third references are first touch with this theory around two, three years ago. And then fourth and fifth, fourth one is transformation, mathematical, and so on. And fifth one, the book is coming in 2015, and I put all of this theory with more examples in that book. What are the next steps? Next step is to adopt a more complicated or more uh, complete dynamic model, including rho. In this model, it was two-dimensional. I have to add rho and examine the theory again. Second, we have to go three, to three-dimensional rho. Three-dimensional means z is going to vary. Also, bank angle would be included. Then, determination of, determination of gain control variables is something that we didn't do anything. Then, we have to apply everything to a toy car in the lab. In, it's under progress. And then, apply for a real size. Then, we need money to fix. Thank you for listening, and I'm ready for any questions if there is. Yep, thank you very much. Questions? I'm lucky to be here. <laughs> early in the morning. But, uh, if you could implement this in a real vehicle, what kind of input data would you need really? Position and uh, the curvature, or what do you need for uh, for making this autonomous driving? Uh, really? That's a really good question. I guess the question is that in real situation, what variables or what data you need? Uh, we didn't apply this on real car yet, but uh, it is obvious that road is going to be calculated by GPS, this is our expectation. In the lab, we have the equations because we determined that, but in the real situation, the equation of the path must be determined and given to us, at least for a short period of time or short period of distance. And then velocity, pavement is very important, it's not under control and it's changing every meter, it's very critical. So we have to have something to trust our control system to determine any error and compensate it. The coefficient related to contact between tire and pavement are so critical and so hard to determine. Yeah, okay.
questions? Okay, not so. Thank you very much.